The sound of science. The sound of discovery. You are listening to the Ontario Science Center. You are listening to the Ontario Science Center. Hey everyone, I'm Alex McDonald. I'm a host here at the Ontario Science Center, and I'm here in the Weston Family Innovation Center to find out the difference between this and this two shiny discs in my hand. Actually, they look very, very similar. You probably recognize them as compact discs. But looking at the nice shiny side here, I'm really having a tough time telling the difference between the two. And I'm actually here with Walter Stoddard, who is a researcher here at the Science Center. Hey, Alex, hey! <laughs> now, looking at these visually, it's not that obvious, but you're here to tell us that science has found a way to make it a little bit more obvious, maybe using kind of more than meets the eye, right? That's right. Okay. Science is always looking. So what's going on here? Well. In, in one case, the professionally done CD, mm -hmm. in, in order to keep costs down, when you're producing CDs you want to distribute uh, around the world to all the masses, you're going to want to press them. And so they go through a process that, where the CD is, is physically put together layer by layer. In this case, where you're looking at a copy, the cheap and easy way to make a quick copy, if you're not going to make a whole bunch of them, is to burn them. So what's going on with burning a CD then? Well, in burning a CD, you have the layers already put together, the CD's made, mm -hmm. and then the, it, a, a laser is applied, and that laser melts away, etches, changes one of the layers within the CD in order to create the same kind of pattern that you have in a press CD. So they're produced in a totally different way. That's right. And this is what scientists are exploiting, I guess, right? That's right. That's exactly right. Because what happens, even though you're, you're if you have a very good DVD player or, or even a mediocre one these days, it will read them both as if they're equal, right? Data is data. However, if you look at it under the right light and under the, the right level of magnification, the right kind of filter, you'll be able to tell the difference in the way that the light is diffracted over the bumps in the CD that's been pressed or over the, the bumps in the CD that's been burnt. So you say the right kind of light. What kind of light are we talking about here? Well, you, you, uh, according to the, the study, what they, what they do is they isolate for a particular wavelength. And um, I, I actually have, now, this is a, a dollar store laser. Sure. So it, it, it'll give us the idea. Right. Uh, in no way will it, will it actually give us the test. So what they do is they, they're simply with, a, with a, a, a light, right? In this case, we're, we're using this, this laser so that we get just a, a narrow grouping of wavelength. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at the way that the light is diffracting, the way that the pattern is being created as it goes over the bumps in the CD. And the diffraction pattern is different between one CD and the other. Now, we're not going to be able to really see it in, in what we're doing here, but you kind of get the idea that, that that's not just simply reflected light, right. but there's also there's a, there's a, a pattern to it. There's a signature it, pattern. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And it's different depending on how the CD has been produced. In essence, what we see is a some, something of a tighter pattern with the press CD, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a little more grainy. It's a little more there's some some lines that you'll you'll detect and be able to see in the burnt CD, and and again with with the proper equipment, uh, which I know the researchers are patenting, uh, you, you'll be able to to see it quite clearly. Now, uh, who might be interested in really knowing the difference between these two discs? Well. If we were, let's say, we were using uh, this one, which which is a copy okay. uh, of information, uh, if we were using it incorrectly, distributing mm. it, perhaps trying to pass it off as the original, okay. then certainly those that uh, that regulate the CD and the DVD industry would would want to be able to tell the difference uh, in, in order to stop us from counterfeiting. Okay, so for those looking out for bootleggers, you really want to know the difference. Exactly. So using this signature, you'd have a pretty good idea which disc was bootlegged and which disc was legit. Yeah, or at least which one was pressed right. and which one was burnt. Sure. So what I'm hearing for you, Walter, is that I probably shouldn't quit my day job. Uh, I, I mean, great news for Bill Gates. Yes, great, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, and good news for, for those that want to make sure that their content is, uh, is secure. For the artists for as the well. For the artists, absolutely. Absolutely right. Well, thanks very much, Walter, for stopping by to tell us about this new technology and copy protection. And this is Alex McDonald saying for all you forgers out there, if there's a laser that burned it, it's a laser that's going to bring you down. Oh, another thing we should mention too is that when you're trying this experiment, if you're trying this experiment at home, be very careful that you don't reflect or diffract the laser beam into your eye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was something that, uh, that we were very careful about. Uh, we don't want any prompt yeah. laser eye surgery. Yeah, uh, I would strongly recommend not trying the experiment uh, because, yeah, a strong enough laser, you could harm certainly something that's a, a, a CDR, a CDRW, a, a CD that 
is burnt. Using a red laser, you may not want to use a red laser for the for the experiment. Uh, we, this is a very low power dollar store battery is almost dead laser. And uh, again, like Alex said, you, you don't want to reflect it into your eyeball. That's a that's a bad plan. Bad <laughs> plan. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend uh, trying to trying to work up the experiment yourself. The study has been published in the American Journal of Physics. And so if someone wanted to look up the American Journal of Physics, it's a recent publication, so early uh, month of December, late, uh, late November, they'll find, they'll find the article. Get the nitty gritty. They'll get the nitty gritty right there, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs>